Hello there, this is Glenn Berry. We're going to put together a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master System today. And we're going to walk through the basic assembly on a test bench. So what we've got here is a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master, which is a really high-end B550 motherboard. I normally wouldn't recommend this board, but I actually got a really good deal on it. Somebody had bought it at Micro Center and then returned it. And then I actually got an additional discount on top of that for a bundle. And then I also used a Micro Center credit card. So I actually got this for about $190 out the door. So this is a very high-end motherboard for B550. It's got a lot of nice features. It's got three M.2 ports that all are PCIe 4.0 capable. And that's a pretty nice feature you don't normally see on a B550 board. It's also got a debug port and it has very high quality VRMs. So this thing is not going to have any problem with overheating and you can put any kind of a Ryzen processor on here. A 3950X will be no problem whatsoever. In my case, I'm going to use a much lower end processor. It's going to be a Ryzen 5 3600. So here's some of the components we're going to use in this system. And we've got the motherboard, we've got some very nice G-Skill RAM. We have a Noctua Chromax Black cooler. And so it's a fairly decent system. So here's a little bit of information about the Ryzen 5 3600. This is the most popular Ryzen 5 processor. And there's really no reason to get a 3600X or a 3600XT. If you're looking at a mid-range processor, this really gives you the most performance for the lowest price. This thing currently costs $160 at Micro Center, and you really can't beat that. It's six cores and 12 threads. And here is something I also want to talk about. This is the date code. So when you look at a Ryzen processor, the date code 2002 means 2020 and the second week of 2020. So that's when this processor was actually built. So in case you're curious, because newer processors have slightly better quality. So here's sort of what the motherboard looks like on a test bench. And you can see the three M.2 uh, heat sinks right there. So here's a little bit more. And the first thing you want to do when you build one of these is you take off the stock brackets. Those are only used with a stock cooler, an AMD Wraith Prism RGB cooler, but most aftermarket coolers, you don't want to use those. So that's one of the first steps you want to do. And you can see I've got the motherboard mounted on a test bench right here. And it's a good idea to do that. If you don't have a test bench, you can just sit it on top of your motherboard case. And the reason you do this is you can do a lot of the basic assembly before you put the motherboard in the case. So then the next step is to install the M.2 SSD. So this particular board has a heat sink on top of it and you've got to take that off first. And then you put in the M.2 and you want to make sure that you've got the screw in the correct position for a 2280 SSD. And so you know, the fiddly part, you've got to take that little tiny screw out and then you put the M.2 drive in next and screw it down. And it only goes in one way. It's got a slot on the side, as you can see right there. And then you've got to hold it down and then put the little tiny screw in there. And it's really helpful if you've got a magnetic screwdriver when you do this, because that way the screw is not going to fall off and you can do it with one hand. So you screw down the drive itself, and then in this case, you've got to put the heat sink back in there on top of it. And the heat sink has a little rubber pad on the bottom that helps it absorb the heat and put it into the metal of the heat sink itself. So it's a thermal pad. So that's the, the next step we're going to do after putting the taking the bracket off. And you can see I've already installed the processor. And this particular board has a silk screen that shows you where to put the memory in case you don't know, you haven't read the manual. But if you only have two DIMMs, you want to use the second slot and then you want to use the fourth slot away from the processor. And again, that silk screen shows you which way to do it. And you can see there's only one way to put this in. These are keyed with a slot on one side. So now we've got the memory in and we've got the M.2 in. So the next step is to install the bracket for the aftermarket cooler. And this is a Noctua cooler. 
And this thing has holes for an AM4 motherboard and also for an AM3 motherboard. So you wanna make sure you align it correctly. It's labeled on that bracket right there. And this is going into screws on the back plate that's underneath the motherboard that you can't see. So when you took off the stock brackets, that back plate's gonna fall off. So what I did here is I took it off the test bench temporarily and put something underneath it to hold that bracket in place, that back plate. And so that way I can get these screws in there properly. And if, it's really important to read the manual on this so you get this correctly done. So you wanna install both of these. Then we get to the second one and you can see you know the am4 holes are on the larger curved side and it's important that you put the screws through the am4 holes if you're going to use an am4 processor And I really like these iFixit magnetic screwdrivers. They're pretty handy. They have interchangeable bits and they're all magnetic so you don't lose little metal, metal parts when you're working on a system. All right, so here is Gamers Nexus recommendation for how to do thermal paste for a Ryzen processor. And just a small bead across the processor. You want enough on here so that the entire IHS on top of that processor is covered when the heat sink goes down on top of it. And this is that Noctua cooler. You take both the fans off. It comes from the factory with the fan in the middle and you take that off and then you have to put both fans back on after you mount it. So the tricky part of this is you've got to push down on the screws quite a bit as you're screwing it down into that bracket. You know, and once you've done this a couple of times, it's not a big deal. And you want to tighten both sides down, alternate back and forth between the two. So here's what it looks like from the side. And you can see the great big heat sinks on the VRMs. This is a, a really high quality B550 motherboard. All right, so now I put the entire system together on the test bench and plugged it in and booted it and everything is running, which is a good thing. That's what you wanna see. And that's the point of doing this on a test bench outside of the case. If there's any problems, it's a lot easier to fix it now instead of waiting until you've got it inside of what might be a, a tight case. All right, so every single motherboard I've ever bought in my life did not have an up-to-date BIOS when I bought it. So the first thing you wanna do is go to the website for the company and download the latest BIOS. And this is really important for AMD Ryzen systems. You wanna be up-to-date. And once you've downloaded that and unzipped it, then you go ahead and update the BIOS and then you're off to the races.